Peter Denoy, and I'm a member of the Rotary E Club of Canada One. And here's a map of Canada, and we are in District 5370. And District 5370 is the northern half of the province of Alberta, some of British Columbia, some of Saskatchewan, and all of Northwest Territories. So it's a large area. I think it's one of the largest geographical districts in the world. However, that's not a big deal. We can handle, handle it all, especially now that we have some, some e-clubs as well. Our e-club was chartered in uh, February of 2013. And um, there is uh, our charter president is uh, Ali Contreras, who is currently in attendance at this meeting as well. And so they organized, um, I joined the club about two years ago, but they organized a meeting in the president's office in Evanston and things have been recorded, etc. However, technology has moved forward considerably in, in five years, uh, but we do have a record of that particular meeting, uh, which is posted on our YouTube channel. Our membership is currently just under 30 and we are throughout Canada. We have a couple of people in Europe, Central America, United States. We have one member who is just across the border. And as we talked about meeting, whenever somebody is in a particular area, they try, we try to get together with the Rotarians, the members that are there. We call them iPods. And, and so then take a picture, post it, and say, hey, listen, we met one-on-one. -on -one. When we he had Ali, as a matter of fact, was coming back from Mexico and there was a snowstorm in Calgary, but Jean-Michel uh, traveled through there and they had lunch and, uh, and had a wonderful time. It's important that we have the face to face uh, when that is at all possible. Um, another thing that I want to make, bring to your attention is that our past president, Jim Ferguson, is district governor nominee and will be district governor in 2020, 2021. As far as we know, he's the first E-Club member who will be a district governor. And I couldn't resist this, but the theme for the district conference has already been chosen and can be nothing but vision 2020, obviously. You'll hear more about it in the, in the future about that as well. Um, our club meets weekly online. And we have a website, and uh, that is uh, where every week topics are being posted on there, stories are being told, there is a greeter, there are, uh, you know, fun things and serious things, and all members are to attend that week, uh, weekly meeting, if they can, uh, minimum half an hour, 45 minutes, report the meeting with a jot form, and then immediately get recognition of that, and uh, guests can come do makeup meetings and get that information back so they can take it to the secretary if they have to uh, have to um, uh, replace that we get one of the things that Google does is record where guests are from and so here is over 50,000 page views don't you know make sure it's page view so every time you click on that and go to the website it becomes a red dot and so there's some big red dots and this is the one in Dominican Republic because every guy time I go on the website it becomes a dot too so if you really want to show that you have lots of people you can do that Chinese lady thing and just go and hit the button and keep visiting on a regular basis but uh, Rotarians wouldn't do that now would they <laughs> One of the things that uh, uh, guests uh, are expected to do, as well as members are expected to do, is make a donation towards the club and uh, in lieu of, uh, of a meal and that kind of thing. So we, uh, we have some numbers here of an average of about $15 per visiting guest that is being made. So that is part of a fundraiser. And uh, the membership makes donations as well. Every three months, we pull a name of one of the people that attended, and uh, that person will get Rotary Foundation credit uh, towards, uh, towards their uh, Rotary Foundation the numbers. We obviously have, because of the website, chance to get feedback from uh, the members, from people that attend, and very informative, and, and uh, it gives you also an idea of how well you're doing and if there's things that you can change or not. 
we have our monthly fellowship assemblies. And uh, but during those, we can have speakers from around the world. We, we can have classification talks. We can have the fellowship as well. And, and we record those on, uh, uh, on our YouTube channel. And interestingly, we had in March a fellowship assembly where we invited uh, young professionals to give us their idea of why they, uh, what we need to do in order for them to become uh, uh, members of Rotary to join. Very interesting uh, uh, meeting and um, you, buy, you can all go and watch it if you want to, want to do that. So the, 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 all our fellowship classifications and, and everything else that we find important is posted on our, uh, on our YouTube channel. We have weekly coffee chats and uh, every Thursday morning at eight o'clock we have that. What happens is that we get the same people coming because Thursday mornings at eight o'clock certain people in Alberta time, 10 o'clock uh, Eastern is a uh, much, you know, limited to that. So we've talked about it to possibly make some changes and add uh, a beer talk or a beer chat or a wine chat or something like that, different time, different day, and announce that and have people drop in. And this is, this is the purely same thing that you do at a weekly uh, Terra meeting where you sit down and before you sit down, you chat and talk about other things and different things and how individuals are doing and you know, you'll get to know each other, other better. Over the years, we've been involved with uh, quite a few projects. Uh, the Alliance of for Smiles, uh, Shelterbox, uh, RILA, we have a very active RILA uh, district, uh, RILA committee, youth committee, and so uh, we sponsorship. Yes, Diane, we are also doing the Dolly Parton Imaginary, uh, Imagination Library, specifically for the Northwest Territories, the Inuit children. And this is an ongoing project where we have cooperation from other clubs and donations from other clubs as well. We've been involved with the El Salvador Literacy Project. We are, uh, uh, have just finished the Subirana Water Project, uh, a $94,000 project to provide uh, water, fresh water, with a new pipe through a duck channel, channel uh, up to the mountain for this particular village that had no fresh and running water. Last year, Canada was 150 years old and our club uh, gave $150 to each local project that a Rotarian member organized. And so we did different things here in the Dominican Republic. Um, I can buy a lot of rice for $150. And we donated that to the senior citizen's home that relies solely on donations for everything, including uh, you know, their food as well. And so um, very interesting and rewarding project. Project Amigo, again, something Ellie is very much involved in, is in, in Mexico where uh, there's school, schooling is done, students are helped we have a particular student that we sponsor and they offer also participation for rotarians to come with facilities to be there and spend a week helping the community there uh, with with project amigo a very interesting and rewarding uh, visit and and trip to uh, to mexico we have had a project that in India with a school for disadvantaged children where we had money to pay the, the teacher, where we had money to buy food and school supplies for the children in, uh, in a very poor area of that country. We shared with another club an exchange youth exchange student. Difficult to do as an e-club, obviously, but last year, Kevin, came and attended several times, made his presentations to our clubs, like you do at a Terra Club, and um, something that uh, we can do probably more, uh, more off as well. But it takes, again, some organization. Uh, we have a member, Vicky, right here, who lives in Guatemala, has a foundation there to help create opportunities for Guatemalans, work in school education as well. And again, we are supporting her with that also. A lot of projects that have happened over the years. And, and again, there's nothing uh, more rewarding than that. But the better you do working with other clubs, the more you can do as well. For Polio Day, 
we teamed up with the other Canadian e-clubs and had a march across Canada. We had a five hour Zoom session and we started in the Atlantic time zone and worked our way all the way across for one hour every time with the program with presenters to uh, British Columbia, where in British Columbia, was the time where the Niagara Falls was lit up with the rotary collars and that was beamed into our meeting. Again, you can, uh, you know, it is, it is something that was recorded and uh, you can watch on, on, uh, online as well. We are planning and working together with about 10 different e-clubs um, on a breakout session in Toronto, best practices for e-club. Watch the program and it is on Monday at the first one at one o'clock and we'll have a large room available and um, um, we will have uh, some interesting presentations again. It will be recorded because it will be Zoom based and uh, we, I hope to have it online within 24 hours after we've done that. Now, last thing I want to show you is a program we have in Canada that uh, involves money. Yes, it's Canadian money, but eventually we can convert it to US dollars as well. And I wanna show you how significant a number we can, we can contribute with that. The government of Canada has, in, in work with the Rotary Foundation of Canada, put aside $6 million, $1.2 million for five years, with money that's not being used, being rolled over into the next year. And so um, I will show you how the dollars work and then the questions, uh, you know, will come after that, no doubt. So, you have a project in the United States with your U.S. club. You raise ten thousand dollars. You have district designated money funds available as well, and so you have a thirty-five thousand dollar project. Now, if you can get a Canadian club to help you to participate, that club puts in $10,000, it's all US dollars, put in $10,000, and the district that club is in puts in $10,000, you now have $100,000. A significant number that I think is worthwhile uh, exploring, get connections with clubs in Canada, and we can make them aware. Of course, there are rules and regulations on that, but the money is there. It has been underused. It, it, I've been told that next year, we'll probably have about $2 million available that can be used. So um, want to keep your, uh, brought, bring that up, that uh, we can always use more money, like we heard earlier. Well, thanks very much. That's in a nutshell about what our club is about and we're growing and we have uh, you know newer members that are uh, coming in and yes um, <clears throat> leave it open for questions if there's any questions or discussion that we can have and, and can have after this thank you